And welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of everyone in our church family, 
our church board, our elders, our deacons, and everyone in uh, our congregation. It is a joy to welcome you. Although the pandemic has separated us spatially from one another, we are nonetheless together spiritually because as scripture affirms where two or more are gathered, God is in our midst. So God is with us and we welcome you. I imagine there's some new faces on the other side of the screen and I look forward to meeting you as circumstances permit. So let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Our call to worship is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God according to his surpassing goodness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with clanging cymbals. Praise God with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Swick. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Lord God, while we were still slaves to sin, you died for our salvation. Yet we still worship the false gods of the world, forgetting that you are Lord. Loving worldly wealth, we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor loved our neighbors as ourselves. Trusting worldly strength, we have not trusted your word, nor followed the word made flesh. Forgiving by worldly norms, we have not shown mercy to others as you have shown mercy to us. Forgive us yet again. Forge us in the fire of your grace and form us into the shape 
of your love. Amen. Let us now confess in silence our sins. Receive now the declaration of pardon. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us join together in our prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, as your word is read and proclaimed, pass among your people, opening minds to enlarge our understanding, opening hearts to increase our love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture today comes from Genesis chapter 31, verse 22 through verse 31. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who is the greatest superhero? Is it Superman? Is it Batman? Or is it Iron Man? Or Wonder Woman? Well, in his book on Paradise Drive, the conservative commentator and columnist David Brooks says that America's ultimate superhero is not any of those. Our ultimate superhero is Achievatron. Achievatron is the hero we all want to be. Successful, young, magazine cover good looking, plus courageous, strong, and without a hint of doubt or a trace of failure. According to Brooks, the American myth and our goal for us and our kids is to become Achievatron, where we are the best at everything, where we always win, and where our perfect lives contain absolutely no shadow of difficulty, darkness, defeat, or despair. Even though we all know that being fully human inevitably includes times and seasons of anxiety, exhaustion, isolation, failure, and frustration, we long for the inhuman, unattainable ideal of mythic American suburban perfection. Thank God we have scriptural smelling salts to bring us back to what is real and to what is surprisingly filled with grace. 
Thank God that while we may demand inhuman perfection from ourselves, our God never does. God doesn't wait for us to come to him when we're perfect or only when everything is perfect. Thank heavens the opposite is true. God comes to us even though we're imperfect, sinful, lost. And God certainly doesn't wait a second to come to us when everything has gone to hell. Welcome to one man's nightmare. That's basically what our text is today. This text is the culminating event of one person's entire life project, trajectory, and character. Jacob, son to Isaac and Rebekah, grandson to Abraham and Sarah, brother to Esau, who Jacob cheated not once but twice, the first time talking Esau out of his birthright, and the second time tricking blind elderly Isaac so Jacob could steal Esau's blessing again. That's good old Jacob, a real biblical success story. Fleeing for his life from the enraged Esau who was out to kill him, Jacob headed east to work for Laban. Jacob married into Laban's family, joined the family business, and then Jacob proceeded to fleece his father-in-law. So fleeing for his life again, this time from an, an enraged Laban, Jacob heads west, where Esau is waiting for him. So Jacob sends gifts ahead of him to pacify Esau. Then he sends even more gifts to further bribe Esau to buy peace with him. Finally, Jacob sends his loved ones ahead of him, women and children first, to separate them from Esau's intended target. All that Jacob had labored to get, by hook or by crook, his wealth, wives, children, slaves, and herds, everyone and everything now is gone. Once they'd forded that creek, and the water returned to stillness. All Jacob saw when he looked down into the Jabbok was a reflection of himself alone. Stripped of advantage, separated from family, crafty old Jacob finally had no more smoke and mirror tactics to get out of this one. There were no more angles to work or tricks to play. Of course, Jacob still had the blessing which came to pay him a visit that very night, a night spent wrestling with a stranger, a night spent struggling with God. Now, perfect people never struggle, but God's people often do. The Benedictine nun Joan Chittister looks at this story and finds it in it a paradigm for all of us in whatever struggle we may face. Chittister says that Jacob goes through, and we all go through, an eight-stage progression in our struggles. Change, isolation, darkness, fear, powerlessness, vulnerability, exhaustion, and finally, scarring. But for each of these desolations, Chittister says, there's a corresponding consolation, a corresponding blessing or gift or opportunity. And these are what God gives to us. When we are in the midst of change, God offers conversion, which is the opportunity to grow, often painfully, into something more and someone other than we were before. As we become isolated, God helps us grow in independence. As we face darkness, the threatening limitation of our knowledge and our abilities, God invites us to live in faith. When we're engulfed by fear, God offers us the gift of courage, trusting that we need not fear tomorrow because God is already there. 
Instead of the futility of powerlessness, we can embrace the strength that comes through surrender. Not surrender to our circumstances, but surrender to our Creator. Instead of fearing our vulnerability, we can recognize and make peace with our limitations. Instead of giving into exhaustion, we can grow in endurance. And finally, in place of scarring, our wounds placed in God's good, faithful hands become the genesis of the transformation by which we are made new. We don't want any bad stuff in our lives, but most often our hard times, defeats, failures, nightmares, and struggles become the difficult means through which we finally, painfully, and ultimately are blessed. The country music superstar Glenn Campbell sold over the course of his career over 50 million albums. One lyric from his most famous song truly was his reality. I'm going to be where the lights are shining on me like a rhinestone cowboy. But all that light and success hid the fact that Campbell's life was plagued with darkness, struggle, and heartache, most of it self-inflicted. Decades of alcohol and cocaine addiction. Three marriages crashed and burned before Campbell met his fourth wife, who finally helped him get sober. Later in life, Campbell returned to the faith that he was raised in. He started going back to church and at a concert at a Dallas megachurch in his 50s, Campbell summed up his story of wrestling with God by saying this, In my life, God showed me a whole lot, and finally I smartened up enough to say, God, you're right. Our midnight struggles, our darkest hours, defeats, failures, and foibles, 99% of the time are not caused by God. But 100% of those times and that pain is used by God to transform and bless us and grow us into being better persons with deeper faith and greater love if we hang in there with God. Jacob wrestled with God and that changed him. God didn't cause Jacob to be a cheat but God used all that cheating to wrestle a blessing out of all that suffering that that cheating caused. God was wrestling to do that. And while God was doing that, Jacob was wrestling to hang in there. Jacob did not give up. He hung in there wrestling through his nightmare and through that wrestling discovering God's blessing. In the end, Jacob was blessed, and he was Jacob no more. He got a new name. Jacob became Israel. Whatever your midnight hour is, hang in there. When you are cornered and outmatched like Jacob, in time, you too will be blessed. But probably not the way in the way you expect or want. Yes, Jacob wrestled and found in that struggle a blessing. But that struggle cost him. Forever after, he had a limp. Our worst days need not define us, but they do mark us. They change us. And in the midst of that transformation, we will find ourselves graced with a new blessing if we have eyes to see it and wisdom and humility to accept it. What was, what is your Jabbok, your Watergate, your Waterloo? Not your crowning victory, but your crowning crushing defeat that forever changed you, that threw your hip out of joint, your ship off course, and your life in a new direction. The biggest of my many Jabbok's was and is my divorce. 
anyone who has been through a divorce will tell you that going through that is like death. Divorce is a failure that changes you in painful ways. And oddly enough, in God-filled ways too. Oddly and wonderfully, God took my failure, my broken heart, and healed it up to be, I think, a better heart, one capable of greater compassion. It's funny how pain can open you up to the pain of others. It's weird how a wounding can become a blessing. But Jacob's story tells us that we should not be surprised when God brings something good out of something bad. After all, we believe in a God who took the tragedy of Good Friday and transformed it into the blessing of Easter. So, if you're in hell right now, hang in there. Your worst day shall not forever define you. If you, in your midnight struggle, are like Jacob, cornered and outmatched, trust that you too will be blessed. Trust and know that God is wrestling too, right beside you and with you and for you to shape your present crucifixion into an eventual resurrection. Like Jacob, our dark time of struggle shall also pass. By grace, we shall all find ourselves on the other side of our midnights, resurrected and blessed, limping into the dawn. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we look to you today in a time of struggle. In this time of pandemic, O oh God, we wrestle with uncertainties. We are beset by invisible enemies. We are troubled by what we fear tomorrow might bring. But Lord, I would ask that you would give us all strength and courage for this day to trust that you are with us and that you already have tomorrow well in hand, and you have us by the hand, and that you will lead us into life. We ask your blessing upon our President Donald, our Governor Eric, and our Mayor Todd. Bless them and all who are in positions of authority that they may use their powers wisely and well to lead us all out of harm's way from COVID-19 and into health and life for all. Lord, we pray for all who are combating the coronavirus. We pray that a cure will be speedily found. We ask, Lord, that you will be with all frontline workers and essential workers, that you will keep them safe as they labor to keep us healthy. We pray, Lord, for all who were ill with the coronavirus or, or anything else, Lord, to be richly blessed by your healing grace. Pour out that grace upon them, we pray. We ask, Lord, your grace upon all who grieve, asking you to walk by, beside them daily as they mourn, granting them your presence and your peace. Lord, we pray for all those who are struggling this hour with faith, for those who do not know how to, they're going to make it into the next day or even the next hour. Lord, stand beside them and lead them out of darkness and into light. Grant your blessing and help them discover your coming light of Easter, which shall dawn upon us all. O oh God, we ask your grace to be poured out especially upon Alan, Alger, Becky and Jim, Betsy, Betty, David, Dick, Jenny, Jim and his family, Jim and Virginia, Judy, Lily's friend Dakota, Linda, Lloyd, Marty, Nanette, Roger, and for these additional persons and concerns that we now name before you in our silent prayers. O 
Oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by Jenny Swick. Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge all of us, whether we walk in or walking in our brightest day or are struggling through our darkest night, to remember and hold on with faith to the fact that God is here with us. And God is not going to let us go until we are blessed. Let us trust that. Let us share that blessing and live that grace now and in all our days. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>